next Thursday evening at 6.20. Tomorrow at 8, survival and the subtlety of the serpent. Everything in the Garden of Eden was lovely. But such sweetness and light was before the serpent tempted Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit. Man has always had a special relationship with snakes. Heart fascination, heart fear. The serpent masquerades as many things. Watch that dead grey leaf in the centre of the picture. Subtle as a serpent, a survival special tomorrow at 8 on ITV. He's no ordinary Joe, you can tell. Even at the fair, things have got a gel. A right's got to put his nerves at stake. Break, break, break. What a train's got to be is... Shake, shake, shake. But give him any kind of crisp. He won't make a racket. Just as long as it says... Oh, walkers on the packet. Mmm, that just cooked taste. You all right, fellas? Don't you insist on walkers' crisps? family from crew who said only, only a mirror will, will do. do. I like the way you can vary the spray. It's easy to work. I'm safe too. Doobie dee dooby dee doo. Gives me total control, does the Myra. I think just the wings a bit hotter. Even the family pets in George getting wet. Myra's everything you could desire. Mixer showers and electrics. For the finest choice of family showers, you've got to admire a Myra. <laughs> Leave it out, Samantha. I want to go home. I miss my fella. My Bella's full of fellas. Not like my Frankie. Would you like some coffee, sir? Coffee? I thought this was tea. Here, dear, give him this. My wife makes the best cup of tea in the world. Well, there's no other tea to beat, PG. Have you been with Costa Bucket before? Every flipping year, mate. I'm married to her, aren't I? I don't need to put anything on my face because I tear naturally. Yeah, all right. Hi there, Shrimp. And why do you want tuna sandwich, please? A mighty white tuna sandwich, please. <laughs> what is it with everyone in this mighty white bread? Soft wheat and rye grains. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> and 30% more fibre huh? than ordinary white. Right tasty mighty white. It's mightier than the average white. Has uh, he gone yet? At 50 miles per hour on a straight, dry, uneven road, just one faulty shock absorber will increase your stopping distance by eight and a half feet. Eight and a half feet can make quite a difference. Monroe shock absorbers, they'll keep your car where it should be, on the road. spending so much time at work that you're becoming a stranger in your own home. You're early, darling. Anything wrong? I don't think you've met us. Then perhaps you should talk to us at British Telecom about how you can save time at work. We've thousands of time-saving products and services to offer. <laughs> See. For a copy of British Telecom's Guide to Saving Time at Work, call us free on 0800 800 888. It's you we answer to. Our local chemist's got everything I need. All Unichem, of course. Unichem all-in-ones, shampoo, Unichem baby wipes, Unichem everything. Unichem. Now, a quick look at programmes for the rest of this evening on 4. Channel 4 News in a moment is followed by comment. Tonight, Sir Roy Strong on 75 years of the Chelsea Flower Show. In Opinions at 8 o'clock, Theatre Administrator Peter Stevens discusses the state of arts funding in Britain today. At 8.30, there's a second chance to see the first episode of Echoes, based on Maeve Binch's novel of love and obsession in a small Irish town. 
At 9.30, Jonathan Price and Cherry Lungi star in the film on four extra presentation, Praying Mantis, a taut thriller involving love, deceit, and a large life insurance policy. Kentucky Fried Medicine at 11 is the second of a three-part investigation into healthcare in the United States and here in Britain. There's been a change to the order in which we're showing this series, so tonight's programme is the one originally scheduled for Monday. And as a result of that change, the film Frenzy will be shown slightly later than published at 20 past midnight. That's the first in Channel 4's contribution to a season of films by Ingmar Bergman. Frenzy, starring My Settling, is at 20 past midnight. Well, now, for the first of those programmes, we join Nicholas Owen with David Walter for the Channel 4 News. It's seven o'clock. Beirut's warring factions agree a ceasefire. New hope that hostages may get out as the Syrians go in. Hello, good evening. A new ceasefire is finally agreed between the factions who've been slugging it out in South Beirut. And mostly it's reported to be holding. Syrian troops are about to move into the area. And we hear from Syria itself that there's real optimism that the Western hostages can, this time, be released. Such hopes are echoed by the girlfriend of journalist John McCarthy, one of the three Britons held. Here, Mr Kinnock accuses Mrs Thatcher of hoisting a for sale sign over Britain. And the prospect of Roundtree being sold unwillingly comes closer as Souchard, the Toblerone people, launch their takeover bid. Roundtree rejects that and the other Swiss offer from Nestle. In Moscow, the voices of Jewish dissent are heard. Which protesters will President Reagan be allowed to meet? And a special report on Mr Reagan's choice as his successor, a man who acknowledges he's the underdog now. Also tonight, the historian who's laboured 25 years to tell the story of a figure who was at times an underdog himself, but at the crucial times, a hero. Martin Gilbert has done much more than chronicle Winston Churchill's war years, and he's not done yet. But first, there are fresh hopes tonight for the release of the 18 Western hostages held in Lebanon, as the two powers there, Syria and Iran, reach agreement about who should control the southern suburbs of Beirut. It's there that most of the hostages are held. A face-saving compromise has been agreed between Damascus and Tehran, allowing the Syrian army to begin their advance into parts of the southern suburbs of Beirut, where Syrian-backed Amal militiamen have been fighting the Iranian-backed Hezbollah. David Smith in Damascus reports. So, after weeks of bitter fighting, a ceasefire has been declared in the southern suburbs of Beirut, and with it comes a measure of hope for the Western hostages. Throughout the day, there has been sporadic gunfire. But reports tonight indicate that, by and large, the truce is holding. The precise details of the agreement hammered out by the Syrians in the past 24 hours have yet to be released. But it's clear that the ceasefire between the two warring factions, Syria's surrogate Amal and the Iranian-backed militia Hezbollah, is just the first step of the process. By tomorrow, the Syrian army, which has ringed the southern suburbs with thousands of men and tanks, is expected to take limited control of some parts of the suburbs, most likely with the support of the Lebanese police and army. If so, this agreement represents a compromise, a face-saving formula for all concerned. The bloodshed, nearly 300 people have died and more than a thousand have been wounded, was an open challenge to Syria's control of...